At the start of the year, gamers were getting primed and excited about CES 2022, and the hope that Intel would finally, finally announce their long-awaited entry into the dedicated GPU market with their Arc Alchemist graphics card, and to kind of finally shake up the GPU market, a market that has frankly been tipped, well, sideways for the best part of two years. So Lord knows it needs shaking up. Sadly, CES came and went with not even a glimmer of information about the upcoming desktop product. Instead, just commenting on how laptop GPUs are shipping to partners, and that was it. Leaving customers kind of in the dark about when we could finally see Player 3 enter the game on the desktop dedicated GPU side of the market. That was until now. Let's do this. Face the camera, face the camera, yep, that's that power it. power supply, so dreamy. Oh my god, it's the Antec signature. With a fully modular design, 80 plus titanium efficiency rating, and 10 year warranty, it will be the most famous power supply you've ever owned. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Now, normally when a hot new product is coming to market, we expect something, either officially or unofficially. On the official side of it, Brands sometimes kind of drip feed information to the market via social media or directly to media like ourselves in a controlled leak kind of way. Instead, we've seen nothing on the official channels, which normally leads us to seeing some form of leak, whether that be a slideshow presentation or an engineering sample ending up on eBay. Wouldn't be the first time we'd seen that happen, and it certainly won't be the last. But we've seen nothing. So when can we actually expect to see something. Well, apparently Q2 of this year. If what's been said in the most recent Intel investor meeting is anything to go by, Intel confirmed that the roadmap looks for them to ship more than 4 million discrete GPUs in 2022, with new laptop Arc GPUs shipping in Q1 to coincide with the 12th gen Alder Lake H series CPUs and the desktop variants arriving sometime in Q2, as well as workstation cards coming a little bit later in Q3. I'm all up for, uh, let's say, speculation and rumours, as it gets you kind of excited and allows you to make your own decision on where things sit. But this is actually concrete information directly from the horse's mouth. And they even went on to say that the architecture work has begun on Celestial, a ultra enthusiast based product. Maybe we could see something to compete with the 6900 XT or the RTX 3080 Ti or even 3090 or even the 3090 Ti, whenever that's meant to be coming to market. Who knows? Maybe Intel's ultra high end GPU will arrive before Nvidia's. Bit of a running joke, but in all honesty, it could happen. And well, if anyone can make it happen, it's going to be Intel. Now, while Q2 is pretty broad in the grand scheme of things, it at least gives us something to focus on as we move into March and then April, when I'm sure a lot more information will start trickling out, either again, officially or unofficially. And with the laptop based GPUs arriving first, at least we'll get some kind of indication as to what to roughly expect just on a slightly scaled down product. So what do we think about it all? Well, I remember when Intel first announced their intent to move into the desktop GPU market, and I made it very clear at the time that they will more than likely suck, at least in terms of a first attempt. And with nothing to go on, that's likely still gonna be the case to a certain degree. The beauty of this release, at least from Intel's point of view, is that it doesn't need to be amazing. It just needs to be in stock and ideally better than a 6500 XT. So as long as it has more than four gig of VRAM, I mean, it should be okay. I mean, can't be any worse, can it? In all seriousness though, having something that can compete with both AMD and Nvidia is never going to be a bad thing as it gives consumers more choice overall. And early speculation seems to point at a GPU aimed towards the 1080p and maybe even like 1440p market which makes sense. Remember, 1080p, even if getting faster in terms of frame rates, is still the dominant resolution. Now, one thing that we are almost 100% sure on is that three models are expected from the Alchemist series, with the top spec SKU being rumored to have, kind of have similar performance to that of the RTX 3070 from Nvidia. So again, 1080p fast paced gaming or 1440p in certain titles. It just makes the most sense. What also makes the most sense is that stock should actually be pretty decent. 
This is Intel after all. They have their own fabs, they have the money, and they have the manpower behind them in terms of software teams, marketing, R&D, and so much more. As long as the products perform on a similar level, are priced right and available to buy, what could go wrong? The beauty as well, if they aren't in stock, is something else that has happened at the Intel investor meeting. Project Endgame. No, we're not gonna see the death of our favorite Marvel characters, rest in peace. But instead, Intel are planning to roll out a service where users will be able to access Intel Arc GPUs in a low latency computing experience later this year, which sounds a lot kind of remarkably like Nvidia's GeForce Now paid for gaming streaming service. I mean, are Intel looking to take on Team Green and become the platform known for being Netflix for gaming? Now that is exciting, especially for those who maybe can't afford a high-end gaming PC, but still want to enjoy gaming while having a seamless experience at the same time, all without even needing to buy or build your own PC. Though, if you do want to build your own PC, I'd highly recommend the eTechnics PC Maintenance Toolkit, where everything you need to build, repair, and maintain your PC. It even has tools for custom loop water cooling. Grab yours over on store.etechnics.com today. And with that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.